Good morning, or depending on when you're watching this, good afternoon, good evening, or good night. My name's Ross, and as always told, out of voice of radio. So today, we need to be taking a look at the Pokemon V of one of the coolest new Pokemon that came around in the Sword and Shield expansion. It's Graplocked V. I like Graplocked. One of my favorite, probably in my top half dozen Pokemon from Sword and Shield. It's a fighting octopus that's all blue and yellow. It's basically a Swedish fighting octopus. Who's not getting on board with that? The question is, is it a good card? And the answer is yes. I am willing to go out on a limb right now and say, yes, this is actually a really good card. And I consider myself quite the fan. Though I'd prefer it if it has a VMAX. At the moment, it does not. Our translation here does come from the lovely Antoine Boulay. Stop me if you've heard that one before. And starting off with the basics, we've got 210 HP, which seems about right for a Pokemon V. Some have a bit more, some have a bit less, but 210 seems about right. We've got a retreat cost of 2, which does mean you get access to Air Balloon for free retreat, which is nice. Because you might be wanting to retreat this bad boy. You've got a weakness to Psychic, which with Mewtwo and Mew running around, I'll be honest with you, isn't phenomenal. Mewtwo and Mew is going to be able to do stuff like copy the second Solgaleo GX and get a one-hit KO while accelerating energy. That's kind of sad. But outside of that, maybe you'll be alright. And you're a fighting Pokemon. Being a fighting Pokemon is awesome. It means Diancy Prism Star to do an extra 20 damage. It means Karate Belt to reduce your attack cost if you're behind on prizes. It means Martial Arts Dojo to do an extra 10 damage if you're not behind on prizes, but an extra 40 damage if you are. It means weakness on stuff like Dedene GX, and the main attack we're going to use here is very low damage, so that is actually going to be very relevant. Or something like Silvalli GX as an example. So being a fighting Pokemon, good. But what does it do? Well, the first attack here, according to the lovely Antoine Boulay, for a single fighting energy, does 20 damage, and if the defending Pokemon is a basic Pokemon, it can't attack during your opponent's next turn. Now, just as a ruling query here, just for clarification, this affects your opponent's defending Pokemon. That means that if they switch, they can attack. It doesn't protect Graplocked from basic Pokemon. It stops that defending Pokemon attacking. So if they use something like Boss's Orders to drag one of your Pokemon off the bench into the active, they still can't attack it because the defending Pokemon can't attack. If they want to use a setup attack, Rather than a damaging attack, they can't, because they can't attack. But if they switch to the bench and bring a new Pokemon active, they are welcome to do so. Also, remember that when a Pokemon goes to the bench and then becomes active again, it is considered to be a new Pokemon. So if you were to use this against, say, a Zacian V, and your opponent were to switch to a free retreating Pokemon, and then retreat to the same Zacian V, we would still count that as a new Pokemon, and it would not be affected. It's also worth pointing out that that big Parasol that we had a talk about a couple of days ago also becomes a really good card here, because big Parasol stops any effective attacks done to that Pokemon, and that will include this. If Graplocked were protecting himself, then big Parasol wouldn't do anything, because the effect would be on Graplot. But the effect is on the Pokemon you're attacking. And if that Pokemon has a big Parasol. You ignore all effects of the attack. Done to. Your Pokemon. And that would include this. So put simply. Big Parasol will turn this off. And it will mean that you do get. Well. Protection. And then Graplot is doing like 20 damage. And that's not really good enough. Really is going to interest me whether Big Parasol actually sees play. Of course, the other thing that something like Zassi and V could do is play Metal Frying Pan or Metal Goggles. And then you'd be doing minus 10 damage. Although we've got ways to boost it up. We'll have a look in a moment. But the goal here, very simply, is just to lock your opponent out of the game. 
Your goal is to be against a Zacian ADP deck, just attacking constantly. Because your opponent basically can either attack with Zacian or they can attack with ADP. But either way, they're not actually doing anything. Either way, it's not working. Either way, you can be shutting them down. The problem here, and it is a problem, is just the low damage output. The low damage output is going to give your opponent turn after turn after turn to get rolling. No, Arcus and Alga and Palkia isn't able to use Ultimate Ray to accelerate energy. But maybe they can just manually attach. Zacian V has got Intrepid Sword. Draw three cards if any of them are metal energy. You attach them to Zacian. Okay. So that ends their turn, but if they're not attacking anyway, who really cares? And then they're just getting set up and getting the energy on in that regard. It's awesome being able to shut down basic decks, and Zacian ADP is basically an entirely basic deck. And Pikachu and Zekrom decks, who you will be hitting for weakness, basically an entirely basic deck. They generally don't play any evolutions. And this is good. Sure, your opponent can be switching around to new basic Pokemon, but they've at least got to actually take the time to do so. And I don't think that's always going to be possible with the resources they've got. If they're not accelerating energy, they're not always going to be able to retreat. And they're going to run out of switching cards sooner rather than later. Yes, you've got Dancy, Prism Star and Martial Arts Dojo, so you're doing 50 damage. Or if you're behind on prizes, you're doing 80 damage. But this will take a long time to get a KO. I love it. And if you can get the lock going, i.e. you get your opponent so they cannot switch out of their basic. Brilliant. And you need to be playing some stuff like Tall Scrapper to get rid of stuff like Air Balloon. Although it won't get rid of U-Turn Board because that goes back to the hand. And you need to be playing it with stuff like Crushing Hammer to try and run them out of energy. There is a lock deck here, but the low damage output and the fact they can switch to another Pokemon is going to make things awkward. As for the second attack, two fighting, one colorless energy, 120 damage. Flip a coin, if heads, it does 100 more damage. Okay. And the good news is we've got a bunch of tricks for this. The 120 damage, even if you flip tails, that's enough to get a Pikachu and Zekrom. It's enough to get a Dedenne. It's enough to get most basic single prize Pokemon. But then, of course, we just got Glimwood Tangle. And Glimwood Tangle lets you reflip. So now instead of having a 50% chance of getting a heads, you've got a 75% chance of getting a heads. Though obviously it is a stadium and it is one stadium at a time. So if you're playing Glimwood Tangle to get the extra chance of flipping a heads, that means you're not playing Martial Arts Dojo to do the extra damage. You have been warned. But then you're up at 220 damage, 240 with an anti Prism Star. But if you're using this attack, you're probably not using Martial Arts Dojo, and that's where it ends. And that's upsetting, because if you're behind on prizes and you flip ahead, you're doing 280. That's Mewtwo and Mew, that's Reshiram and Charizard, and that's Arceus and Alga and Palkia. But in order to do the 280, you've got to have Martial Arts Dojo, which means you're not playing Glimwood Tangle, which means you've only got a 50% chance of getting a heads, rather than a 75% chance, a 1 out of 2 chance, rather than a 3 out of 4 chance. And that's a problem. Do you take the risk of flipping tails for the chance to get a 1-hit KO? Or do you give up the chance to get a one-hit KO so that you can do a lot of damage? And the answer is... Pass. Depends on the board state, depends on your opponent's deck. If it's desperation mode and you need the KO right now, you go Martial Arts Dojo and cross your fingers. If you don't need the KO right now, then you probably go Martial Arts Dojo, get a lot of damage on the board. Obviously, if you're hitting for weakness, then the 120 with Diancy and Martial Arts Dojo will be enough here. You'll, you'll be fine. Even against Snorlax V Max, you're doing 180, which doubles to 360. So even a Snorlax V Max will be going down here. You should be all right, ladies and gentlemen. You should be all right. I love Graplocked as a Pokemon. And I love this card. Personally, from a personal standpoint, I adore this card. 
Looking at it competitively, I see a huge amount of advantages and a huge amount of awkwardness. The first attack is awesome, but your opponent can switch their Pokemon and the damage output is quite low. The second attack does a lot of damage, but you really need two different stadiums to take advantage of it. And that's just not possible. Plus, the attack cost is awkward. Yeah, you've got Karate Belt if you're behind on prizes, but otherwise you're going to need Colossal. That is how you pay the attack cost here. Colossal lets you attach a basic fire and a basic fighting from your discard to your Pokemon in any way that you like. And there is a colorless in your attack cost here. So you use Colossal and then attach either an energy or a Karate Belt if you're behind on prizes. And then you're rolling and you're off and, and you've, you're good. But then do you really want to be adding a stage 2 in the mix? This isn't a, as soon as I get this attack rolling, I'm going to win the game. So it does make me slightly nervous. Plus, you really want to be playing this first attack as a disruption attack. Which means you need lots of space in your deck to play disruption cards. But then if you want to use a second attack, you're using lots of cards to try and get a stage 2 out. And hopefully at this stage you can see where I'm going. There's a lot of conflicting things going on in this and it makes me kind of nervous. But you could potentially lock basic Pokemon decks just out of the game. So I've got to give this between three and four Wossies. We don't give half Wossies. That would be barbaric. There's a lot of potential here. And I don't know if it's going to come straight out and be the best card in the format. But I absolutely do think this has so much potential that we could see a great game with it. That's what I think. But I'd like to know what you think. So let me know in the comment section, go nuts, me nice. And then make sure you like this video, subscribe to this channel, follow me on Twitter at the Wassy, and Twitch for some live action at twitch.tv slash ptcgradio. If you want to support the channel, get some bonus podcasts and all that good stuff, head on over to patreon.com slash ptcgradio, or you can do exactly that. And please do make sure you're checking out youtube.com slash plays, where you can find out about a whole bunch of games that don't have Pokemon in, but are pretty gosh darned awesome nonetheless. But by far the most important thing as always, look after yourselves till next time, would ya? Thank you very much for watching. My name's Ross, and you've been watching PTCG Radio.